I'm gonna get a good 60 foot. I'm gonna get a good 60 foot. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I'm Aisha. Welcome, I hope you consider sticking around. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you get notifications whenever I upload new videos. So I am super excited today because I have finally gotten myself a set of drag switch. <laughs> I've been using the Mickey Thompson ET Street R, which are basically a drag radial. And while they are really good and they do hook for what they are, they're just not a drag slick. I have been struggling to get a good launch. I've been struggling to get a good 60 foot time and I decided to finally get slicks so that I can combat that issue. I got myself a set of Lenso wheels with the Mickey Thompson slicks. They're 24 and a half by nine. <sighs> yeah, they're wide. I am like crossing my fingers because I'm hoping that they fit. Um, from what I've heard, they will fit. I'm a little bit skeptical because that could be with stock calipers. I have the Willwood calipers and rotors. Another one of my worries is that if they don't fit and if I need a spacer to make them fit, then I'm gonna have to put in some extra work because I don't have extended wheel studs. But I'm gonna go ahead and try them on and see how they fit. Just as I suspected, <laughs> the wheel does not clear the Willwood caliper. The lug nuts aren't even tightened and the wheel can't even spin properly because it's touching. And the clearance between the tire and the spindle is so close. Like I can only imagine if the tire expands like when you're launching at the track. There's no way that I can run these without a spacer. So I'm gonna add these spacers to see how much of a difference they can make. Each of these are five millimeters, so it basically adds up to be like a 10 millimeter spacer. I would not recommend doubling up on spacers to drive with. I'm only doing this to test fit. There's like literally no threads poking through to even put the lug nut on. Like I'm definitely gonna have to do the extended wheel studs. 
Like it literally can only turn like a couple times. Well, at least with a 10 millimeter spacer, the wheel clears a caliper and it can spin. So I guess that's a step in the right direction. <laughs> And there's definitely more clearance back here, but it's still close and I don't think I would trust it with the tire expanding while launching at the track. So I'm definitely going to need a bigger spacer than 10 millimeters. So it's confirmed, <laughs> the slicks will not fit without a spacer. And the biggest spacer that I have is basically 10 millimeters because it's two five millimeter spacers and I put them together to make the 10 and it's not enough. So I'm guessing that I might have to do a 20 millimeter or a 25 millimeter. So I'll probably order a 20 millimeter and a 25 millimeter just so that I can test them out to see which fits better. But I am going to have to do the extended wheel studs because there is no way that even a five millimeter spacer would be cutting it really close with the regular studs. I'm actually gonna make a full install video on the extended wheel studs. I've been meaning to install them for a while now. I actually have them already, but I guess laziness of not wanting to take the whole knuckle off and have to get new wheel bearings and ball joints. But my ball joints need to be replaced. They're, the boot is broken on them and yeah, so I guess it's not really that disappointing, you know, at least I'm gonna have new wheel bearings, new ball joints. Once I have the extended wheel studs installed, I will test fit the slicks again and go from there. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you get the notifications whenever I upload new videos. Also, be sure to check out my website at ladybuiltgarage.com. So stay tuned for that video of installing the extended wheel studs and see you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs>